the cylinder flow regime depends on the Reynolds number. Between Reynolds number of 5 and about 40, we get steady laminar flow and the streamlines look something like that. So you get the symmetric separation region behind the cylinder. And the Reynolds number is based on the diameter of the cylinder as we will see in a moment. Between a Reynolds number of about 40 and 160, we get unsteady laminar flow with vortex shedding. And then above a Reynolds number of about 160, we get transitional turbulent flow. Here the focus is on simulating steady laminar flow and getting a result that looks like that. Um, so this is a fluent case study, um, steady cylinder flow. And it's from a tutorial uh, contributed by Cornell to courses.answers.com. And we will pick a Reynolds number of 20, uh, which is in the steady cylinder flow regime. And the Reynolds number is defined this way. Rho is the density, um, mu is a coefficient of viscosity of the fluid. These are fluid properties. Uh, U infinity is the free stream velocity and D is the diameter of the cylinder. So what I'll do is to get a Reynolds number of 20, I will pick the free stream velocity to be one meter per second, the diameter to be one meter and the density to be one kg per meter cubed. So the numerator, all three terms are one. And so the coefficient of viscosity will be one over 20, which is 0.05 in SI units. So if I go into my framework of what's inside the black box, what we are going to do is, you know, we have a physical problem, the cylinder flow at a Reynolds number of 20, and we're going to give user inputs to the uh, black box. And based on the user inputs, the, the black box, the fluent black box is going to determine the mathematical model and solve it numerically and get uh, selected variables at selected points. So let's take a look at the mathematical model first, which are governing equations and boundary conditions. The governing equations, we have the 2D version of continuity uh, for laminar flow. And then we have F equal to MA applied to a vanishingly small chunk of fluid, the Navier-Stokes equations in the X direction and in the Y direction. And so we have three partial differential equations. We need to solve them and determine three unknown functions, u as a function of x, y, v as a function of x, y. So u and v velocities, uh, and then the pressure as a function of x, y. And there are a bunch of assumptions uh, embedded within the governing equations, which I won't get into here. And then uh, for the, the domain and boundary conditions, um, we take the cylinder uh, and we have uniform flow coming in, you know, far field, and we define a far field boundary that is also circular. And we need to pick the outer boundary, and here we will pick it as 64 times the diameter of the cylinder. So it's pretty far out because at a very low Reynolds number, the flow is very relatively viscous, so the FX are felt pretty far out. And we need to check the effect of moving this outer boundary, which is one of the verification steps. Um, so the domain is the region between the cylinder and this outer boundary. And at the cylinder, that is the fluid that is in contact with the cylinder will be at rest. So U equal to zero, V equal to zero is a boundary condition there. We divide the outer boundary into two uh, sections. The front section, which is shown in red here, we set uh, a velocity boundary condition. So we'll set u equal to one and v equal to zero. And then for the, uh, the backward part of that boundary, which is shown in blue, we'll use a pressure boundary condition because that's where the flow is going out of the domain. And the, we'll set the pressure to be one atmosphere. So that gives you, uh, you know, the governing equations and boundary conditions. So um, I've gone through what is the mathematical model. And quickly, the numerical solution strategy uh, that's used by the fluent solver, which is based on the finite volume method, um, I will review now. And, the, you know, the numerical solution will yield the uh, selected variables as the primary unknown that selected points. And let's look at what the selected points are. And everything else is calculated through post-processing. <clears throat> so 
So the numerical solution strategy in the finite volume method is to divide the domain into multiple control volumes or cells. This is shown schematically here. And we choose to determine the primary unknowns, U, V, P, directly only at the cell centers. So if this were my cell, I would determine U, V, P only at the center of that cell. And that cell center value is an, uh, is an approximation for the average of each of those values within that cell. And then we can find other locations, uh, the, the you know, UVP at other locations through interpolation of the cell center values. And what the fluent solver will do is it will derive algebraic equations relating UVP at the cell centers. And then it will invert that to get UVP at the cell centers and then everything else is calculated from that um, through post-processing. The other way to look at the finite volume method is, you know, we start off with the differential form of the governing equation of boundary conditions. The solver actually um, generates algebraic statements of conservation, that is algebraic equations relating cell center values. And for that, it will go to the integral form of the governing equations and apply that to each control volume to get the algebraic statements of conservation. And in the process, we introduce a discretization error which we can minimize by refining the mesh. Now these algebraic equations are nonlinear, and so we have to uh, derive linearized algebraic equations about guess values, and we introduce a linearization error, and we, we solve, you know, we keep updating the guess until our imbalances fall below tolerance. And this is described in much more detail um, at you know, elsewhere. Uh, for instance, in my E. Cornell uh, certificates, uh, certificate on computational fluid dynamics, CFD. Okay, so we've gone through the, quickly gone through the mathematical model and the numerical solution strategy, and we have seen that the selected variables are UVP and the selected points of the cell centers. And quickly, uh, you know, we need to also have some, uh, be able to do some hand calculations, which I use very broadly. It means you need to have, you know, you need to have some expectation of the results. So if I go back to the cylinder and look at three points, so this A is in the front of the cylinder, B is behind the cylinder, and C is a little bit, you know, further down um, from the cylinder. So what is your expectation of the pressure variation? Would you expect the pressure at A to be greater than B or them to be equal? Or would you expect pressure at A to be less than B? Similarly, what is your expectation of the velocity magnitude? You know, the velocity magnitude can be calculated by just squaring uh, the velocity components, adding them and finding the square root. So would the velocity magnitude at C be greater than the free stream velocity, equal to it, or less than it. Uh, think about these, and you can check your, you know, um, the fluent results uh, against your expectations.